Hello, Googleization Nation. Welcome to Better Leaders, Better Workplaces, a GGG Unleashed podcast with thought leader Vivian Blade. In each of Vivian's episodes, we'll cover the latest trends and emerging practices around creating resilient workplaces. Let's begin. Talent management has undergone significant changes in this post-COVID era. The workforce, workplace, the work itself, and how work gets done are all radically shifting, and we're not done yet. Yesterday's playbook for talent management won't work anymore. Hello and welcome back to GGG Unleashed, Better Leaders, Better Workplaces. I'm Vivian Blade, President and CEO of Experts in Growth Leadership Consulting and a recognized leadership and resilience thought leader. On this podcast, you'll get the latest insights and proven strategies to help you solve those pressing turnover, burnout, and workplace culture challenges your company is struggling with right now. So if you're a business or HR leader, you don't want to miss an episode. Talent management today is less about managing talent and more about creating the conditions for both organization and talent to thrive. In fact, in their 2024 Global Human Capital Trends study, Deloitte emphasizes an increasing importance on human sustainability, which requires organizations to focus less on how much people benefit their organization and more on how much their organization benefits people. Yet only 43% of workers from that study say their organizations have left them better off than when they started. So how should you approach talent management and your human capital strategy amid these changing expectations? I'm so excited about today's guest, Sri Chalapa, co-founder and CEO of Engagedly, which is a leading technology company that works with HR teams worldwide to create exceptional workplaces that drive results, elevate employee satisfaction, fuel success. I met Shree a couple of years ago after being named one of Engage At Least Top 100 HR Influencers, which was truly an honor. Thank you for joining us today, Shree. Welcome. Well, thanks, Vivian. It's a pleasure to be on the show. Great. Thank you. So excited to have you and can't wait to hear more from you about this topic of, of talent management in today's environment and our human capital strategy that we need to be thinking about. But as we kick off, I want to first give you an opportunity to tell us a little bit about yourself and about Engagedly. Yeah, definitely. I'm happy to do that. Um, yeah, I, uh, my name is Sri Chalapa, co-founded Engagedly about eight years ago at this point. Uh, my background has been primarily been in technology consulting and services. As a side note, I also dabble in film and music, but I haven't been able to do that since I've... Uh, been so heavily involved with Engagedly. Engagedly is a new age talent management platform that focuses on really connecting the entire experience of employee within their organization, all the way from their onboarding to their development and growth to performance management, and then recognition and, and rewards and uh, and driving better engagement uh, within within their entire talent journey. So. So we are a platform to really fulfill that promise that you just talked about in terms of how do we get organizations to be more beneficial to the employees as well as the employees are to the organizations. Yeah, great. Thank you for that. You know, it, it's not a one-way street more, and uh, you have such a fascinating background. I, I'd love to to uh, tap in some of those other things that you're doing in, in film production and in music sometime. But um, let's talk more about this environment that we're in right now, where you know we've seen this radical change, of, of course, as I mentioned, around talent management and human capital strategy. So and we also know that there are a lot of trends around the future of work that we talk a lot about that terminology that are driving a lot of that change. Tell me a little bit more about what you're seeing around these future of work trends and what can we expect as we look forward in the next you know, two, three, five years? Well, the future of work trend is really about acknowledging people as humans at workplace really and not treating them as numbers on a spreadsheet and obviously we go through these cycles you know these boom and bust cycles where there's a lot of hiring and then there's a lot of layoffs and then lots of hiring but i think employees are like you know saying at this point you know i'm i'm done being treated as this number on a spreadsheet you know i need to be treated as a human being and i need to be recognized for my own 
aspirations at workplace. Organizations that don't do that will have constant churn of their people. They'll have retention issues. They're not going to get the best out of the people that do stay. Organizations that recognize that we are actually hiring and have people and treat them as humans whose own aspirations are something that they need to take into consideration are the ones who are going to thrive. So the future of work is really is, is about treating our employees as people who have a their own goals in life and at work and really trying to connect that to organizational goals in life and at work and they want transparency they want more timely feedback they want to be respected they want to be recognized um and they want to be really be you know at the end of the day treated like humans who whose purpose is aligned with the organizational purpose and so purpose becomes really important for organizations to understand, help help individuals understand, and to respect that and pull that in is a lot of what, what I'm hearing you saying. And so I think we have to reshape then really our, our approach, our focus, how we think about our role as leaders and, and as organizations based on what you talked about and, and really how we lead. And so based on that, you know, as you work with different companies, what do you find that they are unprepared for? What are some of those, maybe a couple of greatest risks that you think leaders should be most concerned about? Well, I think the, the thing that at least the, I would say generationally speaking, the leaders who've been in this for a long time are probably not as prepared for a more honest discussion that employees might have with them. You know, I think one of the things that I have noticed, even through my own journey, through managing, being an individual contributor, managing people, and then, and being a leader, is that people are more open about what they want and what they expect from the organization. That wasn't the case a few years ago. More at, at that point, it was like, I will do give everything I can, and I'll hopefully you recognize my work, and I will get new opportunities at my workplace or get a promotion or get a raise. Now it's like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to necessarily keep working my weekends and evenings and nights and expect that you will at some point recognize that. I'm going to ask for it now. And I want to also ask for the type of work that I am really interested in and, you know, and the things that align with my own values and purpose in life. So I think they're not prepared to have those discussions as much as they, uh, they should. So that's a big one, I would say, in terms of what people need to be really prepared for in this environment that we're in. And that's not just true for US. I think that's that's a global phenomenon now, you know, because I work with teams across the globe and I see that mind shift is is transcendent across multiple geographies at this point. Mm-hmm. Good. So if they are not really prepared to have those conversations, um, what's it, what's at stake? for organizations well, if they don't prepare themselves for that that kind of transparency and and communication and respect and honor for the employees i'm hearing you say yes and one thing i want to add to that is also they expect transparency from the organization they want to be told the truth and not some you know whitewashed um blue sky scenario of the organization they want to know when there's bad news, they want to know when there's good news. They want to know what the organization's purpose is, what they're trying to accomplish. They want transparency and accountability and from the leadership as well. So that's very important. Now, if those two things, you know, broadly speaking, are not met, you're going to have two things. One is the people who really want a good career and want to be aligned with the right organization believe and they'll go to other places where they can get that. And there are plenty of options at this point because many organizations have already pivoted to that level of you know, management style, if you will. Or the ones that will stay might not give you their best. They're, they're gonna check out and, and you know, the quiet quitting as, they, as people have called it. Um, in other words, now they're, they're gonna be disengaged really at the end of the day. And you're not gonna get the best of the people um, from, from those, um, from those uh, you know, people in your organization, which is really a sad story because organizations obviously will not benefit from the talent pool they have, especially in this disengaged workforce that, that they might eventually end up at. But there are people who are also not living up to the potential. Those people who are end up staying are not living up to the potential. So it is not necessarily beneficial to them either in the long run 
it's not giving them job fulfillment it's not giving them purpose in life and that's not good from us as a human species to be you know just working for that paycheck without really having some level of fulfillment from that work yeah and we know that that with the tight labor market today with not enough people that we need people to come in and and feel not only productive but really committed so that they do give and so that we can can fulfill the mission of the organization and fulfill the purpose for individuals as well yeah so engagedly is a technology platform i want you to talk a little bit more about that a little bit because being able to manage those conversations manage that type of work environment there's a lot that we can do around leadership skill development but how do we support that and so talk a little bit about how engagedly really helps businesses and hr leaders close the gaps on some of those risks that we were just talking about yeah so you know we are a platform a solution for the organizations who want to do the right things in the future of work. You know, organizations that want to be transparent, who want to have these honest, honest conversations, who want to treat their employees as humans, you know, have a good mechanism for listening to those people at their workplace so they can, you know, align better with their own aspirations and, and, and life goals and work goals. That's, it's a platform to serve those organizations better. So in, in that context, you know, we provide a, basically a suite of tools that helps people with more continuous feedback, having a skill development mechanisms by our learning and development tools in the platform, being able to have a, a good mechanism to have one-on-one -on -one discussions. One of the big things we encourage even within our organization and everyone I talk to and also the, our clients is to have those weekly one-on-ones as a manager so that you are having these good discussions with the employee and not just you know, shipping the work over the wall and expecting things to be done and not really having that that human connection with their employees on a, on a weekly basis at the minimum. And then obviously there are tools for recognition. There are tools for making workplace a little bit more fun with points and badges and rewards and things of this nature. So there are a suite of tools. Now, obviously, the tools are only as good as the organizational strategy around this. And so our goal is that we work with organizations who already have some semblance of that talent strategy and a talent philosophy that we want to be able to you know treat our our people as humans and work with their aspirations and align them with the organizational goals for those people you know our solution is a great fit because then they can tailor a solution to those uh, to their to their strategy but at the end of the day it's just a solution it's a tool it's not going to solve itself it's like buying a really good pair of running shoes. The shoes don't run themselves. You still have to wear them and go for those training runs before you can run a marathon. And it's yes. and that's basically what we tell our clients too. You know, tool alone will not solve the problem unless the mind shift changes at the leadership level. Good. As as much as many of us would like the easy way out to be able to run a marathon without all of the work, you know, such is, you know, what we think sometimes about tools and technology, that it will come in and 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 solve everything when you have to fundamentally to have a culture and a mindset shift first. And then the technology and the platform helps to enable that. It sounds like what you're saying. Yes. Yes. And, yeah. and, and one thing I want to also highlight, you know, Ira actually talked about something a few months ago, maybe even a year ago, about the generational talent shortage. I want to second that. I mean, I think people don't realize as much as, you know, people like Ira have realized. And it is actually something that should be very alarming to a lot of leadership is we have a generational talent shortage. Even if we do have a recession or we have another you know, round of, you know, lower growth or negative growth, it's not going to solve your talent shortage problem because it's a fundamental problem of talent shortage that is stemming from multiple things. Obviously, people have retired. A lot of people never gave up working during the pandemic and not going back. The younger generation has decided for the most part that we're only going to be working where it feeds their own self-fulfillment and in many ways, rightly so. And we are, people are having fewer babies in general. And our immigration levels are also coming down, at least the skilled immigration is. Um, if Even if you read the news, you know, obviously there's a lot of immigration going on across the border, but we have a talent shortage among the skilled work workers, and that's not getting solved. And I don't think it's going to get solved in a generation at least. And I think people and organizations need to be aware that, that is, this is a 
a infrastructure issue broadly at this point. And unless they are competitive in this market with the right approaches, they're not going to be able to attract and keep their best people. Yeah. You know, my, my mantra is we want to build the kind of workplace where employees can truly say, this is a place where I love to work and I feel valued. And that really is the kind of environment that you have to create so that you get that stickiness that you talked about and can help work through these challenging times of, you know, talent availability that is such an issue today. Well, you know, as we close, are there two or three parting thoughts, maybe strategies or tips that business and HR leaders can take away as they're working to improve employee engagement and retention in their organizations? Yeah, the one thing I would say is really focus on on employees. Ask Sometimes take some time out of your work discussions as a manager or as a director or as a VP, or whatever your role is in the leadership, to spend time truly having an honest discussion with the, with the employee on what their career goals and aspirations are, what their life goals and aspirations are, and see how the organization, or at least in their capacity as a manager or a, or a mid-level you know, director, even if you're at that level, how can you better align with those aspirations and help them along those journey? You know, if somebody wants to, you know, let's say, is planning on having a family and, you know, how can you work around that, you know, in, instead of using that as a mechanism, say, oh, sh- oh, shoot, I might lose this person for a few months. But really thinking about how can I work with this person to help them do what they want to do in their own life, but also at the same time, figure out how, how can you make them still valuable to the organization in the long run. So that those type of honest discussions need to be hap- uh, need to happen more often. Uh, I don't think there's, they're happening enough. So those are the, that's a big, big, takeaway. And the other big takeaway is people don't recognize their people enough. You know, but even if you're a peer or a manager or a leader, or even if you're an employee reporting to a manager, I think take some time out of your day or a week to find those two or three people who went above and beyond their call of duty to recognize them you know, and tell them, thank you and be show some gratitude for the work they did. And I think that goes a long way. It, it goes much further than a, a big variable comp or a big compensation increase that you might get, and it's free. So I would encourage every every CEO to think strongly about having a very strong recognition culture within the organization. And sometimes it starts at the top. In fact, I would say most of the time it starts at the top. If the CEO and the executives at the top are not recognizing the people below, that culture will not permeate throughout the organization. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Culture stops, starts at the top. And uh, is is what is in, is critical to infuse all these things that you've talked about there. Well, we could talk so much longer. There's so much that I would love to to get with you, and we'll talk about an opportunity uh, to get more and hear more from Sri uh, in just a few moments. But Sri, again, I want to thank you for being here. And how can people get in touch with you? And and what's the best way to learn more about Engagedly? Well, I'm a pretty avid, you know, sharer of my own thoughts on LinkedIn. So Shrikant, my full name, Shrikant Chalapa or Sri Chalapa, co-founder, CEO of Engagedly. Uh, you can learn more about Engagedly on engagedly.com. That's E-N-G-A-G-E-D-L-Y, engagedly.com. So yeah, that's probably the best mechanism. Shri, thank you again. We could just go on. There's so much value that you shared with us here. And We'll also have Sheree's contact information and a link to Engagedly in the show notes. I also asked Sheree to join me for a fireside chat so that we can go deeper on this topic. And you can also bring your questions. Details about that and a link to register are going to be in the show notes. Are you shifting your approach to human capital strategy? And do you have the right technology to support it? Engagedly will be a great partner in this process. And be sure to check out Sheree's podcast, the People Strategy Leaders Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. I work with organizations to build better leaders and better workplaces. Let's work together to enhance yours. And connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm always sharing resources and generating conversations about the topics we talk about on this podcast. I'd love to hear from you. If you're ready to elevate your leadership or would like to bring an inspiring message to your conference or corporate event, let's have a conversation. I'm here to help. Thank you for tuning in and learning how to develop better leaders and better workplaces. We'll be back next month with Vivian for another episode. 
But until then, you can access a set of Vivian's resources by visiting her website, VivianBlade.com. And remember, don't let the shift hit your plans.